my nap time over already? I'm Eric, a private pilot based in Los Angeles. Join me and my family on our aviation adventures throughout Southern California and beyond. When they first announced a two-track autopilot, I was really excited about a more affordable autopilot coming to the certified market. Having an affordable autopilot really reduces the workloads. It lets you turn around and like check in with your family sometimes on long trips. It makes flying a little bit more enjoyable. Uh, this autopilot is a modern, capable autopilot and because TrueTrack has brought it to the certified market at a specific price, it puts it within reach for a lot of pilots. I had the TrueTrack Vision and the Dynon HDX system installed at St. Aviation in Florida. And I made the trip out there from Los Angeles to Florida without an autopilot at, on the way there and then with the autopilot on the way back and it makes such a huge difference. I'm stoked to be able to share the TrueTrack autopilot with you guys. I'm gonna do a full review in flight on the way from Whiteman to Apple Valley, California. Um, in the future, I'm gonna be doing a couple of follow-up videos on the finer points of operation of the autopilot. So subscribe to the channel, click the bell, get in the loop on everything. If you haven't already checked out uh, the full review I did on the Dynon HDX, check that out on the channel. And also uh, some of our trip videos like the Sedona trip video, that one's a fun one. Oh, by the way, I would never sit alone in the back of an airplane with an autopilot on, nor would I encourage anybody to do it. That was just a bit of movie magic. All right, let's check it out. True Track Vision Autopilot for Certified is a two-axis modern digital autopilot. It's got a pitch servo and a roll servo underneath the floorboards here in the Cherokee. There is no trim servo. You do the trim with the manual trim. The system also has a power switch that turns the autopilot on. The autopilot has a control head. This is the two and a quarter inch control head. There's also a three and an eighth inch and a flat pack that's available. On the control head, there is a LCD screen, a mode button, an altitude button and a center knob that rotates and pushes in for selections. There's also a blue emergency level button. When you're in an unusual attitude uh, and you're spatially disoriented, you could push this blue level button and the autopilot will recover the aircraft to straight and level flight. In my installation, there's a autopilot source select switch. This switch determines if the autopilot is connected to the Avidyne IFD 540 or the Dynon HDX. When the autopilot is connected to the Avidyne, it receives via Airing 429 GPSS roll steering commands from the Avidyne flight plan. When the TrueTrack is connected to the HDX, it receives a heading bug, altitude bug, and vertical speed bug, and it'll follow those bugs. I believe the TrueTrack is also able to connect to the Aspen E5 and Garmin G5, and I think it'll take the heading bug and the altitude bug from the Garmin and it'll take the heading bug from the Aspen, but I think they're currently working on the altitude bug as of the date of the publication of this video. There's also a control wheel steering button on the yoke. To disengage the autopilot, you press and release the control wheel steering button. If you hold the control wheel steering button down when the autopilot is engaged and turn to a new track, then release the button, the autopilot will adopt the new track and the current vertical speed. All right, that's an overview. Uh, let's see this thing in action. Let's go flying. Sky clear. Temperature 15, 2.3, altimeter 3027. VOR Alpha circling approach runway 12. All right, so I've got the barometer. I'm dialing that into my HDX 3027. I need to dial in my um, bar barometer setting on the true track. It doesn't automatically take it from the Dynon HDX. And I believe with the Aspen E5 and the Garmin G5, uh, those units will actually automatically take the barometer setting from your digital EFIS. But for the HDX, I've got to press ALT twice, and then I've got to synchronize the altitude that it's displayed here with the altitude on the HDX. The HDX shows 980, and I'm going to set this to um, as close as I get to 980 to 979. So I r turn the knob, and then I'm going to push it in to set it. Now my altitude, my barometer is essentially synced between the true track and the digital EFIS here. Uh, as we're taxiing here, we're gonna do a check on our true track. It says GPS okay and there's a flashing asterisk, which means that it is communicating with um, the Avidyne 540. If I'm under 10 knots, it'll say the GPS status there. Once I get taxiing above 10 knots, it's gonna display the track. All right, so now I'm going above 10 knots. You can see the track is displayed there. 209, 211.
track information that the true track displays is um, it's partly GPS track, but it's also got an internal gyro. So it's a gyro assisted track and it's not subject to the usual GPS lag from a GPS track. I've got a flight plan loaded in my Avidyne IFT 540. And when I activate that, I'm gonna go ahead and activate that now. Um, the flashing asterisk changes to a plus on the true track. That means that there's an active flight plan and it's communicating with the GPS. Okay, so departing out of here, we're gonna get a left downwind departure and we're gonna to have to stay under the Burbank class Charlie shelf, which is 3000 feet. So I'm going to pre-select an altitude on the autopilot of 2,800 feet. And I do that by pressing Alt button. When I turn the knob, it increments the uh, altitude numbers by 500. So I can go from 2,500 to 3,000. Now, to do it by 100, you push the knob in and rotate it. So there's 2,800, and then I push it again to set it. So I've got my altitude pre-selected here to 2,800. When I take off and um, after I get about a thousand feet above the ground, I'll engage the autopilot by pushing in this button and it'll grab onto my current track and it will grab onto my current vertical speed and will make the airplane climb up to 2,800 feet. Why the tower, Cherokee 631, Bravo Whiskey, holding short one two and alpha for left downwind departure. Cherokee 631, Bravo Whiskey, uh, left downwind departure approved. Clear for takeoff with the left hand one departure, runway 12631, Bravo Whiskey. Power is good. Pages are green. Airspeed's alive. I'm on the left downwind departure here. I can go ahead and engage the autopilot by pushing in the center knob. Right there, it grabs onto my track, grabs onto my vertical speed of 600 feet, and is going to climb at 600 feet per minute on that current track up to 2,800 feet. If you have an altitude pre-selected and your climb rate is less than 400 feet per minute, when you engage the autopilot, it will choose 500 feet per minute as your climb rate. So we're 2,300 and we're climbing. Now we can really look out for traffic here. Now the underline here under the 306 on SEL means that the selected track is 306. But what I want to do is go a little bit to the left because I don't want to run into those mountains. So I'm going to turn this knob to the left. That'll change my selected track. I'm going to go 10 degrees left to 295. And the airplane, uh, the autopilot will turn the airplane to 295 track. In the last call inbound from Newhall Pass, it was an uh, unreadable second. Approaching right. altitude. We're just about out of the Burbank class Charlie, so I'm going to climb up higher. And press altitude and select up to 5,500. Push the center button in twice. We'll climb at 600 feet to 5,500. And we'll go to the right here a little bit. I'm going to turn in the direction of my course manually. We're still climbing at 600 feet per minute to 5,500. I'm going to hold the control wheel steering button down now, and the autopilot shows I'm in control wheel steering mode. I'm going to make that turn, and I'm going to manually hold my climb right here. So I'm just kind of turning around, going to get in the direction of my uh, GPS course just to demonstrate this control wheel steering function. So I'm turning here, I'm in the direction of my course and I'm just going to let go of the control wheel steering. When I let go of the button it picks up the track that I'm pointing on and my vertical speed. Now I'm just going to press out and I'm going to reset my altitude that I want to climb to. Now I'm going to go up to 7,500 at 600 feet per minute, that's fine. We're climbing on the 053 track up to 7,500 and it wants a little up trim. If you let go of the control wheel steering button and your climb rate is under 400 feet per minute, it'll go into VS zero mode. It's not altitude, it's just vertical speed zero and it will maintain zero 
uh, vertical speed, zero climb rate. Um, but if you have like updrafts or downdrafts, you'll still gain in uh, descend altitude. Uh, it's not going to try to like fight to get to a specific altitude. It's just going to hold the vertical speed at zero. They say this mode's useful for flying in turbulence. That it's uh, more comfortable to you know fly in turbulence in that mode. All right, we're 6,300 climbing at uh, 7,500, and uh, I'm going to activate the GPSS mode. My autopilot source select switch is switched over to the Avidyne 540, so the True Trek will receive GPSS roll steering commands from the Avidyne. You can also hook up like a handheld portable to the True Track, but it won't do like uh, turn anticipation. It won't fly procedure turns and holds. If an IFR certified GPS navigator like the IFD 540, when it's connected via Airing 429, the True Track will fly like anything really that's drawn on the on the IFD flight plan, like procedure turns and holds and DME arcs and things like that. It'll fly those curves. So I've activated the leg and. I'm going to press GPSS mode, I'll press the mode button here, which will put me in GPSS mode, and it should turn over and intercept the course. We're in GPSS mode, autopilot is making the right turn. We're still climbing. At any point I can adjust my vertical speed right here because the cursor is under the SVS, the selected vertical speed there. I can just turn this knob right and left and adjust the vertical speed if I want to. So, autopilot in GPSS roll steering is going to intercept this course. It's, it's achieved a uh, course intercept angle here. The desired course is 057 and we're on a track of 104 right now. We're on a 45 degree intercept for this course and we're Getting close to our altitude here, we're going into altitude hold mode. And I'll anticipate this by powering back a little bit here as we get to our altitude. All right, look, we're starting to intercept the course and turning left here. And we're holding altitude here at 7,500. So we've successfully intercepted the course. And we'll just get it trimmed out. True track vision autopilot definitely tends to be a little finicky in asking for trim, so I usually trim it till the enunciation goes away, and then I kind of don't worry about it unless I make a major like power adjustment or climb rate adjustment or something. Now the uh, true track has intercepted the course pretty well. I'm going to show you one other f cool feature. If I just hold my finger on the Avidyne and draw another waypoint rubber band here and let go, and then activate it, activate the rubber band the autopilot will automatically just turn to intercept that course. So here it goes, it's making the turn. I didn't even have to do anything because it's still in GPSS mode. All I had to do was redraw something different on the, uh, on the Avidyne. Okay, another thing to do, I'll just do, instead of intercepting the course, I'll just press direct and we'll go direct back to our waypoint. That's going to make the turn. All I pressed was direct enter, enter. Autopilot's doing everything else. Today we're going to Apple Valley. Why are we going to Apple Valley today? Because they have a cool LPV approach where we can check out the uh, capabilities of this autopilot. And they got really cheap gas, which is a great reason to go somewhere. TrueTrack has some pretty cool safety features. One is the emergency level button, which when you're in an unusual attitude will recover the aircraft into um, a straight and level uh, orientation. So we're gonna test that out right now. I'm gonna be in a climbing left turn. I'm gonna let go of the yoke and I'm gonna uh, press the emergency level button. Right now I've got the autopilot disengaged. I'm manually flying the aircraft. All right, unusual attitude, sort of, and then I just press the button, I let go of the yoke, and it goes to a zero degree bank mode, and a vertical speed zero mode. So, it let the nose go down, now it's raising the nose back up. After it's leveled the wings, it goes into a track mode, and it grabs onto a track. 
selected 057 as the track, and now it's making its way over there. And it's just going to hold me at a zero vertical speed on a 057 track. But you can see, like, in an emergency or you get totally spatially disoriented, you can just press that, and it'll get you back, uh, you know, the shiny side up. Emergency level button is the second way of engaging the autopilot. The other way is, as I showed before, when you push in the knob. Those are the two ways to engage it. Three ways to disengage it are to press and release the control wheel steering button, to hold the center knob in for a while, like uh, I think it's over one and a half seconds, or to flip the autopilot power switch. So three ways to disengage. Another safety feature is the automatic envelope protection mode, which will prevent you from going into uh, greater than 40 degree bank turns. I've disengaged the autopilot, and over here you can see that the AEP automatic envelope protection mode is off. When we press mode, it goes into standby. Um, that means that it is standing by monitoring my bank angle. Now, if I'm, I'm going to make a, a bank turn to the left at 45 degrees, and I'll let you know what it what the autopilot tries to do. I'm manually controlling the aircraft. The autopilot is disengaged, and I'm turning right here at. 45, it's nudging me back. It shows AEP active. It nudges me back. And feel that. You'll have to trust me on this. So you can feel the resistance in the yoke. It just like nudges you back. So that's a really cool safety feature. If you're worried about uh, overbanking at any point, it kind of gives you a little bit of a reminder. If you are somebody who has a tendency, I guess, on uh, base to final turn to overbank, um, or you're flying into like mountainous strips at slow speeds or something might be a good feature to have active. One final safety feature that I want to tell you about is um, the minimum maximum air speeds. When the installer configures the autopilot, the installer will set a minimum and maximum air speed. So if you have a climb rate that's programmed to be like 1,300 feet and you get into a, like a high density altitude, um, you'll be bumping up against your minimum air speed. This will prevent the autopilot from pitching up so much that the air speed bleeds off too much and that the aircraft stalls. Same thing on the dis descent, um, it, it won't let the airplane exceed a certain speed that is pre-programmed in there. Those are all adjustable, configurable in the, by the installer. Even though you can set this uh, minimum, maximum airspeed, there's no indicated airspeed climb mode, which is a little bit of a bummer. TrueTrack's other autopilots do have an indicated airspeed climb mode, so hopefully it's something that they can implement in the future. I know um, the demand seems to be there from the user base for it. So the TrueTrack Vision for Certified has a mode where it can couple to an LPV um, glide slope and fly an LPV approach. According to the uh, flight manual supplement of the TrueTrack Vision for Certified, the autopilot is technically not certified to uh, fly any coupled instrument procedures, uh, including approaches. So technically, you're not really allowed to fly in IFR conditions a coupled instrument procedure with this TrueTrack autopilot. The other limitation is that you cannot have the autopilot engaged below 700 feet above ground level in any conditions. So having said that, um, the autopilot still does have the functionality to fly a coupled LPV approach. It does not fly any, it, it will not couple to any analog signals like uh, ILS or VOR. I've got my approach loaded in the Avidyne 540 and I'm going to go ahead and call up um, Joshua Approach and uh, let them know where I am and get uh, clearance for this uh, VFR practice approach. Joshua Approach, Cherokee 631 Bravo Whiskey VFR request. We're 631 Bravo Whiskey, Cherokee request. Yeah, Josh Approach, Cherokee 631, Bravo Whiskey's a Papa Alpha 32 slant gulf over El Mirage Dry Lake Bed at 7,500. Just want to do a, a VFR practice approach, a, a GPS approach into Apple Valley. Bravo Whiskey squad 0457. 0457, one Bravo Whiskey. 61 Bravo Whiskey, ready contact. Uh, I think it's uh, 8 miles west of the Victor Airport. They so proceed direct nasty, cross nasty out above. Uh, Seven thousand uh, practice approach approved. Maintain VFR. Direct nasty, uh, about above uh, seven thousand VFR practice approach approved. Thanks, Marvel Whiskey. One zero and westbound. We just have to maintain above seven thousand. I've got uh, five miles to go before nasty, so I'm going to press out. Adjust my uh, altitude down to seven thousand. And then five hundred feet per minute is fine. So I'm push and set again. It looks like the waypoint is named Nasty or Naste. 
I don't know. I hope it's not too nasty. Every time you go into a new sector, get handed off to a new air traffic controller, you get a new barometer setting. You've got to go through the sync process in the true track again by pressing altitude twice and dialing in uh, the same altitude that your EFIS is showing after you set the barometer on that. All right, we're approaching our 7,000 foot altitude. All right, we're here at 7,000. Autopilot has leveled out. After this waypoint, we can go down to 6,300. So the autopilot's making a left turn here at NASTE, and we're going to select altitude, and we're going to go down, push the knob in, rotate it to the left twice here, 6,300, set it, and set the vertical speed at 500 feet per minute down. And I'll bug my altitude, 6,300 on the dyno, and the new heading. All right, we're approaching our altitude, and it goes into altitude hold mode. So this approach has a uh, T arrival. Uh, I'm not sure if this one is technically a, what's it, terminal area arrival, terminal arrival area, terminal, a TAA. It looks like a T, and then there's minimum sector altitudes for the different uh, quadrants of the approach. Um, but in any case, it's uh, like a T where these turns are totally right angle. And you'll see this autopilot flying in GPSS mode anticipate the turns. The Abidine will tell it to anticipate, round off the corner of these turns so it doesn't uh, overshoot the final approach course. All right, coming up here on Curel Waypoint, we are going to make this right turn. Still holding 6,300, and we're going to go down to 6,000. So I'm going to select... 6,000, and it doesn't start descending until I push this in. So we're making the turn, so I push it in, 400 feet per minute, make that 500 feet per minute. Every time you push in the center knob, cursor will move. I'm going to make this climb rate 600 feet per minute. All right, we're at 6,000 here, and we have two miles before Hedry. We're going to make this right turn, and you're going to see this autopilot's going to turn the rounded off corner here that the Abidine is drawing. Now we're going to descend down to 5,800 when we make this turn. All right, we're making the turn. Press altitude, push the button in, turn the knob twice over, and push twice. We're descending down to 5,800. And making the right turn, rounding off corner here. You can see it kind of cuts the corner on the Dynon. All right, now the autopilot's gone into glide slope arm because we're holding at the proper altitude before the final approach fix. So we have to be at the proper altitude at 5,800 in this case, but in altitude hold mode or vertical speed zero mode at the right altitude for the final okay, approach fix altitude. for the true track to go into glide slope arm mode. 61 Bravo Whiskey, ready to search. Tell me it's squawk via fire for good proof. Squawk via fire, change frequency. Thanks, Bravo Whiskey. So we can see our glide slope coming in here on the HDX. There. And we've got our minimum set to 3380, and my altitude bug is set to 4100. That's when I'm going to disconnect the autopilot. So the glide slope is armed. We're coming up on the final approach fix. We're going to make the turn to the right, waiting for it to couple. All right, we're coupled. Now we're going to power back. Now we can descend. So right now the autopilot is following the glide slope down, keeping that needle centered. I'm just managing power and trim, managing my airspeed. You can see it's right on course, right on the glide slope. Apple Valley traffic, Cherokee 631 Bravo Whiskey is about 5 to the north, inbound on the GPS practice approach, uh, straight in for 1-8, Apple Valley. Looking good, it's really holding this uh, glide slope well and holding the needle centered. Speed's looking good, all that's looking good. Approaching altitude. Approaching my disconnect altitude. 
And that's 4,100. Uh, disconnect at 700 feet above the ground. Apple Valley, automated advisory. Clean, Tom, altimeter, three, zero. Apple Valley traffic, Cherokee 631, Bravo Whiskey is on final straight in runway 18, Apple Valley. On the glide slope and. Approaching minimums. Approaching our minimums. 500. Apple Valley traffic, Cherokee 631, Bravo Whiskey, short final runway 18, Apple Valley. Minimums. Hello, hello. We're at minimums. Just the runway. Some of the things I like about the True Track Autopilot, it does a good job of holding the uh, track and getting to the altitude and leveling off if you assist it, anticipate it with power. Um, the interface is pretty easy to understand. It's not terribly confusing or anything. Pretty easy to get the hang of it. Uh, I really like the control wheel steering feature, the emergency level button. All the features are pretty good. Overall, I think it just represents a really good value for somebody looking to install a basic two-axis autopilot into the airplane. Because it's, not uh, because it's not authorized for a coupled instrument approaches, I don't think it's for somebody who's, uh, you know, into like heavy IFR flying or somebody who's really eyeing the GFC 500 that has less restrictions on it. Um, the lack of the IAS mode is one of the negatives. But, um, you know, I think those two things are the big negatives. Overall, I think it's a really great value. I've been really enjoying using it. If I flip the autopilot source select switch over to the Dynon HDX, uh, the HDX will send the bugs over to the uh, True Track, and the True Track will follow the bugs. I already made a video on it, so here's the other video uh, popping up here. You can go check that one out if you're interested in that mode. Otherwise, in the future, I'll be making some scenario-based videos on the finer points of using the True Track Autopilot. So click subscribe, click the bell. If you like this video, click like. Let me know that you liked it. I really hope that you found it useful. Come get in the loop on everything on the future videos. And until next time, thanks for coming along on the journey with me.